The House of Representatives grills the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Geoffrey Oyema, over the demolition of part of the Nigerian High Commission in Ghana and... More troubles may be brewing for the governor of Edo State, Godwin Obaseki, as a federal high court sitting in River State bars him from participating in the People's Democratic Party governorship primary. This is PLOS Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. Welcome to the program. Now, the House of Representatives has stated that it will not tolerate further attacks on Nigerians and its citizens in Ghana. The House Committee on Foreign Affairs handed down the warning at a meeting with the Foreign Affairs Minister, Geoffrey Oyema. The House of Representatives had questioned the Minister of Foreign Affairs over the event, which took place late last week. The charge the affairs of the High Commission of Ghana to Nigeria had also been earlier summoned on the same issue. Joining us to discuss this is diplomatic affairs analyst Adeni Kunu. And of course, we have a high Zua Agbonaima, the former member House of Representatives. Thank you very much, both of you, for joining us on the program. Thank you very much for having us. Thank it's you. a pleasure to have you both. All right, let's get started. I will start with you, Honorable Member. What do you make of the handling of what many are describing as a diplomatic nightmare for Nigeria and Ghana? Well, uh, to, to me and to many Nigerians and all Africans all over the world, we are saddened by the behavior and by the attitude of the Ghana government. Uh, this is unacceptable. Uh, for me, I've thought that we Africans would be able to come together to move our great continent forward. But over the years, I, I saw what happened between South Africa and Nigeria, Nigerian government, many years ago. When South Africa we were having an issue of apartheid, how the Nigerian people stood up to defend and to protect, to help their own African brothers and sisters? What was the payback? The South African government paid us back later with that you know, behavior by killing Nigerians, innocent Nigerians. Here again, just our own brother and sister from another country within the continent. Ghana taking the, you know, I mean, this is unacceptable going about to destroy Nigeria's house in Ghana. So, are we not saying that there's an issue, there's a fundamental problem between we Africans, that something is wrong with we Africans? I'm wearing this shirt today to show to you Nelson Mandela, who stood after going to prison for 27 years. He said, we must work together as brothers and sisters. All right, let's bring, in, uh, let's bring in uh, Mr. Kunu now. Um, our lawmakers are talking tough. The House of Representatives says uh, they will not tolerate further attacks on Nigerians and her citizens in Ghana. What actions can they take to give tit to the expression of disgust? We'll still take that same question to the Honorable. I think that in international politics and diplomacy, there are times when you jaw jaw and there are times when you war war, especially when the country who does that to you uh, should not have done what they call in the military friendly fire. This is no friendly fire. And I think very strongly that there are lots of things that must be addressed. Now, apart from what is in the popular uh, media, which is the fact that um, they wrongly demolished that land, uh, in some of the researches I've done, I found out that um, the land, according to the traditional council, 
that actually occupies that place where the High Commission building is, has come out to say the land upon which that particular building was, uh, that land doesn't belong to the Ghanaian government. It belongs to the traditional, uh, the traditional council. And my concern again is, they mentioned, and I quote them, that they had talked about having discussions with the person who actually built that particular structure. I chose my word very deliberately. When they talk about the person who built, they've said that the building, according to the traditional council there, does not really belong to the High Commission, but somebody who knows the people who are at the High Commission set up that structure, and they've had discussions time and again that the person should come forward but the person is actually leaning. Well, Kuno, I, I, I also saw that. I also saw that report. I, I think it is just from one perspective. With the government, we don't have a rebuttal. As it stands, the Nigerian government is acknowledging that something happened at the embassy there in Ghana. The intricacies of it is still being investigated. But however you look at it, the, the authorities of Nigeria in that country have said something was done that was incorrect, pending the outcome of the investigation. Uh, that's the premise of my question to you. Okay, uh, basically for me, let's also look at the fact that, um, of how I begin, or I started, I should say, that there are times when you judge on, there are times when you war war. I remember very well that uh, during the time of uh, Good Luck Jonathan, there was a time South Africa misbehaved, just as the Honorable said, and I have to quote him very well because he actually was on point with what he said. South Africa deported a number of Nigerians, they manhandled Nigerians because of the yellow fever vaccination card. President Jonathan took 80 South Africans and deported them. I also remember when the problem of Bakasi Peninsula started, I knew what the late Abacha did. And of course, I can also tell you what happened after that. There are times when a country begins to do this to your citizens, as much as we've got chances for you to have discussions, you have to do this. You can remember when China uh, was actually running amok as far as the US economy was concerned, Donald Trump, although they were having conversations, still took certain drastic measures to tell them we are not inferior to you. So I was expecting the Nigerian government, even in the course of the conversation, to look at 40 or 30 high-profile Ghanaians in Nigeria and put them on the next available plane to Ghana while the discussions are going. Don't also forget that a number of years ago there was something that came up regarding businesses that should not be done by foreigners only reserved to Nigerians. I remember what the Ghanaian, the Ghanaian government did to Nigerians, locking up businesses, messing up Nigeria. So this matter did not just start, it's been building up. And until Nigeria understands when to strike where necessary, these things would continue. All right, um, let's go back to um, Mr. Agboni Yima. You are, you used to be a member of the House. Um, Joe Ferriema told uh, the honorable members that the Ghanaian government has apologized, but he insisted that Nigeria's demand is for the Ghanaian government to rebuild uh, the structure. A pending investigation and corroboration of some of the issues Mr. Kunu raised as per the ownership of the land. Do you see such a scenario taking place? Well, uh let, let me say this, that uh, of your favor, <laughs> this is not something that we should joke with. And uh, I think we will be called Mr. President, President Buhari. He's a complete gentleman. Uh, people should take him for a ride, for his uh, you know, calmness, you know, and his gentility. So what is happening now is that we must take the bull by the horn. And uh, I, I want to charge the Foreign Affairs Minister. I know he's, uh, he's a very wonderful He's a great guy, and uh, to do the needful, uh, because we cannot tolerate it. We cannot take this anymore. A lot of my friends who are in the social media and uh, civil society group have uh, reached out to me, and uh, I just told them to calm them down, because they were also looking for ways and means to take their beauty down here in Nigeria. But I said no, because we don't believe in violence. We don't believe. We always want to look for a way out to bring peace. But if they think that they have monopoly of violence, I don't think that Ghana is too small for, for Nigeria, Nigeria to, you know, to curtail. It's too, they are too small. But I want to see them as our brothers and as our sisters. 
that a no is a no. If no, like I saw on the television not too long ago how the the, the people in Ghana were protesting against uh, you know racism and uh, you know what happened in America about the death of uh, the Floyd and they were protesting against racism. And uh, I just look at this. This is a, 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 another racism that uh, you know that they have now started to back up. This is a total racism of the highest order. If they are protesting against a white man killing a black man, what about black to black? We are killing ourselves. I will say we are brothers and sisters, and we are blaming the white people for our own nemesis. I think something is wrong with blacks. Something is definitely wrong with us. That we don't even appreciate our own. We don't appreciate our own. Look at what is happening, destroying Nigerian government property. All right, let, let, let's bring uh, let's bring in Mr. Kunu again. And I join hands with the, the National Assembly, and I join hands with the government. I join hands with the you know patriotic Nigerians. Enough is enough, so that we have to put a stop to this. So other African countries will not see Nigeria. That All we right, are Mr. Abuna Yima, uh, let, let, let's 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 bring in Kunu and get also get his thoughts as well. You, you he act, you actually alluded to it, uh, Mr. Kunu, earlier when you talked about um, uh, a sad relationship. The relationship relationship between Ghana and Nigeria has been tense for a while when it comes to the um, area of trade following the border closure by our government. What do you say to comments that the demolition speaks to a deeper issue uh, than we are ready to acknowledge? And what are some of these deep issues uh, that we should be paying attention to? Honorable, uh, I want to say something that's very instructive here. And I'd like to go back to South Africa in, in, in respect of what he said. Let's not forget that Nigeria, by nature, have a mantra anywhere they find themselves in any part of the world, which is break down the walls of barriers to success and succeed legally. So oftentimes the stories we hear about Nigerians committing crime, that is infinitesimal in terms of the percentile in comparison to the number of Nigerians that are doing outstanding things across the world. I've said that to establish one thing, that anywhere Nigerian citizens are, there is an imaginary threat in respect of Nigerians taking over. But you will not blame us. We have a mantra. We succeed against all odds anywhere we find ourselves, and that has become the bane of what we find. That said, I must say very categorically that... Um, it is very important for Nigeria as a country to also begin to look inwards and consider the things it has not done well. Let me go back to that structure. That structure in question has been under construction for the past eight years. What I want to say here, how can you build a residential structure of this country for eight years? That is enough for certain things to have happened that perhaps uh, could have been considered improper. When the National Mosque and the Christian Center in Abuja was built, both structures took less than three, four years. Those are religious centers in Asuro. But you're talking about a place that is representative of Nigeria as a sovereign country. But for many people who, don't, who do not understand, the High Commission of Nigeria is actually Nigeria in another country. So you'd have to ask the question, since Nigeria, for instance, Ghana gained independence 57, Nigeria 1960, let me say our diplomatic relations with Ghana started in 1963. Between 1963 and now, why has Nigeria as a country not arrested structures that will serve as residents for the, for the diplomatic corps over there? So these are some of the things that they see, and they consider Nigeria an serious country and are able to dangle all kinds strongly that we need to begin to consider how we treat the things that belong to us abroad, how this is abroad, how we handle diplomatic policies and issues abroad, or else we will not be respected. All right, uh, Mr. Abunayima, I want to ask you this. So, like, 
we have a country when things are really hot and emotions are high, there is a lot of reaction. Uh, when China did what they did the other, um, just a, a few weeks ago, there was a whole lot of outcry. People said, oh, this must happen, that must happen. I actually get, got a lot of, uh, um, uh, you know, fisting on social media, so to speak, um, on the in, uh, interview we had here with um, an ambassador. Now we have this, even though that was um, a person, they, they were treating Nigerians wrongly. This is a building being demolished. What do you make of this, you know, response when the, the emotions are high, issues are on the ground, and then after a while, it just slides away. Do you see this happening in this case? Because I see this as a reason because of the fact that the COVID-19 is, uh, is in place and uh, a lot of people that would have wanted to act can't really, can't really do, and do much because uh, the people are just trying to help themselves to you know, have a one or two square meal a day. Uh, a lot of people have been home uh, doing nothing because of this uh, coronavirus. Of course, some people call it Chinese virus, uh, COVID-19. So, however the case might be, but I, I, I see this that uh, for any patriotic Nigerians, this country belongs to all of us. So, to see another African brothers, African sisters from another country moralizing us, try to ridicule our being, and uh, we continue to have uh, you know happy hand and uh, steady hands of friendship, of fellowship, of oneness, of one African, one you know one race, and sometimes they just take us for a ride, and they have always done that, you know. Uh, but unfortunately, just because we don't try to be violent, we are not violent people. We are not, in my own culture, nature, that I was brought up, I was brought up to respect my elders, and, uh, you know, and they uh, have a sense of humility, and, you know, be submissive, and, uh, you know, respect others. Because I lived in America for over 21 years. And I can tell you, you know, most of my friends were white people, the Spanish people, you know, just few black Americans. But I tell you, uh, when you now start saying that we African, Africa, Africa for God's sake, and we all begin to blame the white people for the racism and all that, when we are even the worst. We are the worst. He's talking about racism in Africa. Look, it is pathetic. Let, let me it let is... me butt in and, and ask you to, you know, um proffer, like give us an insight. What is gonna happen with this particular case? We see situation happen and then it just goes away when something new comes on the horizon. Do you see us getting a comp I mean, a conclusive um, um, result from this uh, diplomatic situation, um, the demolition of the building from the Ghanaian government? Well, all I want to see that, I've often, often said this, that Nigerians, I remember when the Reverend Jesse Jassi and, uh, you know, civil rights, you know, activist in America is a very good friend of mine. He told me many years ago, he said, what are the problem? Why are you that anything that happens that you don't like to protest? I think every Nigerian, wherever you are, whether you are home and abroad, you take it upon yourself to protest peacefully, not by, by being violent. You must protest to send a message, a clear signal, a clear message to, to, to you know, the Ghana people that, look, enough is enough. We cannot accept it. We cannot take this. In Nigeria here, those who have the opportunity to know much about social media, I think they need to go about to sensitizing the people, peacefully be constructed. We won't let the people, you know, that means uh, I'm talking about the Ghana government to know that we cannot take this and we cannot accept it. Even though there's an issue, there's a way to mitigate, to reach out, you know, having a you know bilateral relationship, you know, that to reach out to the you know Minister of Foreign Affairs or, or, or to reach out to the, the government of Nigeria, what is happening, the reason why they tend to de demolish or destroy the, the, the property that belongs to Nigeria. In the government in the our country, there is there must be a way, a way of means that to to relate and to discuss all these bilateral relationship to having a you know at least a wonderful and clear reason in destroying right. uh, the party. Not uh, just to right. be upon and say that uh, the uh, government 
You, okay. are, you, are, you, you won't do anything. We are going to do whatever you want to do. No, this is the time to rise up. This is the time to stand up. This is the time to join the government on the day. I support Mr. President Buhari. Enough is enough of this rubbish, of this cabbage. All right, let's okay. bring in uh, Mr. Kunu again. And uh, just um, the same question, but rephrased in another manner. How long do you think before we see the definitive action uh, being requested by the Nigerian Minister of Foreign Affairs that the Ghanaian authorities have to rebuild um, the demolished structure? I'd like to um, come to certain things that will make me answer your question uh, because I will not take it in isolation. All right. Well, just, just realize we're time the Nigerian government, are you, are you with me? Can you hear me, please? Yes, yes, I can. In 2009, the Nigerian government actually reviewed what would take university education to the next level in this country. This is 2020, 11 years after the Nigerian government has not fulfilled what it signed. Again, I'll say that the Abuja Declaration was actually uh, held here in this country some years ago, to which Nigeria was a signatory where it was decided that 15% of, of the country's budget would go to health, till today doctors are still going on strike. The Nigerian government has not been able to demonstrate that even within the country, it could do a lot of things as to show our international prowess. I'm going to move from Nigeria now to the International Criminal Court in The Hague. The United States government was part of the foundational builders of the International Criminal Court in The Hague. But when it comes to signing, the U.S. refused to sign because the U.S. says none of its citizens can go to prison abroad, that they can only be tried at home. That simply means the U.S. gives you the impression that inside and outside, in all of the iniquities of the American government, it will not minimize the life premium on our citizen. Is there anything that Nigeria, for instance, the Ali Bortin, uh, fraud, the U.S. actually had their citizens return to their country, and their, their citizen was tried in their country. Have we tried the people that were involved in the Ali Bortin scandal in this country? Nigeria at times doesn't show that it is serious with certain things. So if you're not serious with dealing with things at home, how much of seriousness will you show? I said here that years ago, Nigerian citizens that are doing legitimate, legitimate businesses in Ghana, they were harassed, they were abused, they were treated as less human. As the Honorable said, the racism against Nigeria was terrible. How much did we see the Nigerian government do? I'm going to find around this discussion, this particular portion of this discussion by saying that that high commission in building where, since it's the Nigerian territory, the Nigerian territory, where are our uh, security operatives? Will you go to the United States government embassy here and demolish anything? You would have been wasted before you realize it. How much of the Nigerian government, how much has Nigerian government paid to security in our embassies abroad and the lives of our diplomatic corps? So that somebody could be there. the demolition took place over an hour, and there was no security operative from the Nigerian government, from the Ghanaian government. As a matter of fact, there's a police station there about 30 minutes away or 20 minutes away. Nothing happened. It simply shows that we have not been able to demonstrate as a country the seriousness and the premium place on the life of our citizens abroad. Whatever it is we see happening with the House of Threat Member and the rest of it all. Whatever we see happening now, it might end that way. For instance, they are talking about paying the, 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 the resident doctors. Have they paid the resident doctors? Are we serious about our citizens, let alone those that are abroad? It is all politics. Let us get you, serious, Mr. for goodness Kunim. sake. There are a lot, a lot of skepticism, but let's hold out that this might just be the turning point in our relationship and our dealings with other countries when it comes to how they treat us um, there. Thank you very much uh, for giving us your thoughts on the program. Thank you for thank having you me. Very much, thank and you. of course, Mr. Agbona Yima. Um, thank you so much for your time yeah, as well. Okay. If there's okay, you know, you know, mm -hmm. that pronounces well, thank you to our viewers out there. Okay. Thank you very right. much for having us. We'll take a quick break now, and when we return, more travels for Governor Baseki as he fights to keep his seat. We'll be back.